most IT companies, uh, they cannot keep up with the innovation rate. They cannot provide the services they need. They cannot rack the stack or actually order the service in, in the, the, the same speed as your business unit uh, request. Sometimes it's, it's technical inability, sometimes it's, it's organizational. Maybe your, your finance department is, is a little off, or maybe you have to deal with legal. What you see around the world is that a lot of companies adopt a cloud-first strategy. They want to get that agility, they want to get that speed, and the answer is cloud. Now for an IT organization, that's difficult to do because how do you manage your own data center? And how do you manage your, your services? How do you manage uh, actually I, uh, shadow IT? Because at one, one point, people will come to you and talk about the, the, the stuff that they ordered online because you're the first uh, person they, they want to talk to you about, about IT. They know you know, you know IT, so um, how, how can you help me, right? So how do you bring those technologies together? That's an interesting point, and that's what I want to talk about in this session. But before we go into that, let's let's take a, a step back. Where do we actually come from? So I started in IT uh, by migrating a mainframe uh, mail product to a NS mail uh, system. So by show of hands, who actually touched the mainframe? Not physically, but okay. So what happens is, uh, at, the, at the, 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 the early 90s, we started to look how to get services from the mainframe, from a monolithic device, to a distributed, distributed model, so x86. And it's funny, because it, 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 it almost felt like a, a, a Oprah uh, uh, program back in the day, because you're getting a, a server, you're getting a server, everybody's getting a server. And uh, I was working at a company at one point, we had more than 2,000 uh, tabletop models. So not only that we actually had to order uh, those servers, we had somebody order those tables as well. And that was a weird situation, because the guy who actually owned the data center didn't allow us to place the servers on the floor. It was a real weird situation. But that's the stuff that we dealt with, right? So we saw a lot of those services, and a lot of companies saw those services, and they thought, if, if, let's look at the utilization. And the utilization wasn't there. It's typically 10%, 50% tops. So that was the birth ground of virtualization. Let's get a beefy server and start to, to consolidate all those services into, into, those, into a smaller footprint. Now, that mobility, that that we got with, with virtualization, that was the catalyst for cloud strategy or for cloud uh, uh, technology. But when you talk about cloud, what do you actually talk about? Are we talking about a platform as a service? Are we talking about a, a, um, a software as a service? Or are we just talking about infrastructure as a service? And for each and any one of you, that is different, right? Some only want to use SAS, some want to use IS. So I started um, talking to research uh, companies and I wanted to know how are we actually, what are our companies doing? What is the model they're, they're looking for? And what you can see here is that 71% is looking for a hybrid cloud. Now that doesn't have to be a data center model because a lot of companies, when they, they wanted new software, Instead of building it their own, they started to look for services lots, such as uh, Salesforce for CRM. Right? Another interesting point, another interesting data point is actually the public one. 18% is, is, is looking for a model which they only use public clouds. Now, sometimes this is uh, referred to as uh, data center zero. And that means that they're going, that that, that company is going from a capex model, buying and stacking and, and, and running servers themselves, to a pure opex model, just renting the stuff. Now, for some CIOs, this is the holy grail, and I can I can see that this is a good thing, right? Because you don't have to rack, you don't have to basically uh, look at your data center every three years and, and rip it out and replace it, because that takes a lot of uh, time, involves a lot of risk. You don't want to do that. Now the main uh, uh, argument 
uh, against it is it's impossible with legacy applications. But let's not go ahead. Uh, let's not go ahead of myself and, 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 and talk like that. So the question is, why do you want to uh, 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 do cloud? Uh, so I talked to a lot of customers in Europe and in the US, and the, the primary reason was that it's a, it inhibits agility. It's a barrier to uh, uh, obtain agility. And if you, if, you, if you start talking and you start to ask more and more and more, you get here, yeah, but it's because of the legacy infrastructure. It's really difficult to actually uh, run it, maintain it, build it. That's difficult. Um, and I can, I can see that, right? And especially when you look at all the technology advancements, it's really difficult to, to keep up. Interesting point for me was that there was only 5% who actually said, no, I want to reduce cost. So it's not, for most, it's not a cost issue. It's just another way to, to deliver the IT services. Now, uh, who have you, uh, by show of hands, uh, who uh, uh, attended Vegas? The VMO in Vegas, okay, go. So, uh, Pat Gelsner was on stage and he said, uh, Gartner says that uh, in 2030, 50% of all the workloads will be in the public cloud, will run in the public cloud. Now, I don't think we can look uh, that far ahead, but another estimate from Gartner was 20% is actually running in cloud in, in, uh, in 2020. That's, that's a more interesting point, because that's in three years. And if you look at the way you actually operate your current data center, uh, and how, what type of tools you use, typically what you see is that it's built on a model of yesterday. We all run everything in, your, in, in our own data center. So my tools only look at the stuff that I'm actually uh, running myself. But in reality, we're already in between. We're between uh, a full uh, a data center of your own and to a model where you, can, where you consume resources from the cloud and when you operate your own data center. So how do you do that? How do you manage that from a skill set perspective, from a organizational perspective, from a operational perspective, right? Now some organizations, they start to think, okay, to deliver virtualization a couple of years ago, we need to figure out how to align our um, business units ourselves or our our teams within the IT organization. So you have the discipline network and the discipline storage and the discipline compute, but sometimes they don't talk to each other. Sometimes this is the most epic political battle uh, in the world. So uh, let, letting a network guy talk to a compute guy, right? So they start to think, okay, how can we do this? Some organizations start to think, I'm, I'm going to create horizontal teams. I'm going to make sure that they, they, they are forced to talk to each other. Some companies said, no, I want to give somebody the keys to the data center. Let's figure a way out to do that. And software was the answer, or is the answer. Think about NSX for providing the network services. Think about vSAN to provide the storage services. And now the compute administrator can deliver all these services uh, by himself. But that's an interesting thing, right? But if you look closely, if you start to consume cloud services, you're going to create new silos because all those all those technologies they are they are great technologies, right? And for every use case, there is a solution. But how do you bring those together? How do you manage those together? How can you provide a service with all these different types of technology, with all these different types of of of, uh, of models to actually manage it and monitor it, right? So building and operating in cloud is becoming is the bottleneck of most organizations right now. So there are five challenges with this. The integration part. You cannot just simply migrate and be indicated to an Amazon environment because they're using a different format. You can't use vCenter to monitor your Azure VMs, right? 
think about security. How are you going to deploy security? How are you going to manage security of all those systems? Think about how to expose and how to connect all those networks. Same with enterprise class applications. Most of them now rely on infrastructure type services such as HA and DRS to provide the, um, the resiliency. I used to run SQL and Exchange uh, boxes with Microsoft Cluster. And when we, we saw HA, uh, it, was, it was a god, uh, was a gift from heaven because I don't need to think about how to run uh, um, uh, that in, in, in the application anymore. I could just tick a box and every VM and every uh, application was now resilient, right? So that, uh, that thing, like what we have with HA and DRS, you have that in a cloud service as well. Um, the elasticity of, of AWS. But the problem is, how do, you, how do you refactor your application to actually use that? That's a difficult thing, right? And with all that in mind, think about the skill sets that you need. Can you refactor an application? Do you actually know what applications you're running? What do they need? What do they, uh, uh, how can they use a particular type of, um, of feature? What are the features actually out there, right? Because if you look at AWS, they're, they're providing 60 or 70 new features every year. So all these five combined is really difficult, actually. It's difficult from a one cloud perspective, but what if you want to use multiple clouds? Then you have to repeat that same thing for every cloud. Now I had a conversation with a large US uh, government agency and he started talking about vSAN. And he said, the problem what I have with vSAN is my operational team. And I couldn't figure out what he meant. He said, I need to write up a five-page document to explain how they deploy and how they manage my VM on vSAN. I thought it's the data store, it's the same thing, right? But for them, that was, they didn't understand how it was different from a uh, storage array, centralized storage array, to a distributed data store inside an ESX server. I thought it was really easy. It was like, okay, instead of that data store, you need to deploy it into a vSAN data store. But he needed to, to provide a five-pager on that one. Now think about if you were going to say, hey, I have this application on, uh, in my uh, VMware environment, but now I'm going to run it in AWS. Well, good luck. I think that's a 200-pager, right? So we start to think about this, and we start to think, okay, what is the crucial part? And I believe the most crucial part is the skill set and your tool set. We looked at a partner that allows us to provide a cloud presence around the world that has global reach and has the ability to scale out like no one else. And that partner is Amazon. They have data centers around the world, and they actually are, they build data centers on an extremely uh, fast pace. Right? So we selected Amazon as a key data center operator of this world. And what we thought was, let's use that data center operator and give it the best enterprise software in the world, vSphere. So how does it look like? So you start off with deploying a SDTC environment, a software-defined data center, in AWS infrastructure. Now, ESX lands on bare metal servers. It is not virtualized. It doesn't run nested. It's solely for you. So if you basically order this service, the servers that you're getting, the hardware, they are for you. You're not sharing it with anybody else. We use vSAN to provide data center services in the server, and I cannot really go into detail about the hardware specs of the server, but one thing I can say to you is that we're using all flash uh, vSAN. That means that we're using the, the uh, 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 flash devices inside the server. That is a, that has a particular capacity, right? But if you want to have more capacity for your vSAN data store, 
we can use elastic block storage services from AWS to deploy a vSAN data store on that. It's not as fast as old, uh, old flash, but it provides you the, the capacity. And we use NSX for the advanced networking and security settings. Right? There is a vCenter that, um, that manages the environment. It's that vCenter where you're going to log into and where you're going to do some of your management. Now this is a service. That means that we're going to operate the service. If there's anything wrong with the server, we will take care of that. But we're going to hit vCenter as well. Now, you can deploy that as a bubble and basically uh, operate v, uh, VM, VMs from that environment. But you can also think, hey, I have my own data center. I have my own vCenter. Let's connect those two. And now with a single glass, you can start to operate, manage, and monitor those environments. So you link that, those two, with uh, enhanced link mode. And from now on, you can start to uh, 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 use vCenter for the entire environment, right? So this is like the, 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 the tools that you're already been using for the last five years. Now vCenter is cool, but it doesn't show you everything. So, and because we're using just normal vCenter endpoints, you can use the vRealize suite to actually get better insights of your environment. Your on-prem environment and your in-cloud environment. This is, uh, I think, one of the good things uh, in the last couple of years, but you can actually extend. Because now, what you can do is you can run your VMs in, uh, in the SDC in AWS, and you can start to expose Amazon services to those VMs. And because you're running in the same region, you can obtain incredibly high speeds. You can do things you, you can perform. Right? There's also a cost involved as well because um, data, um, if you um, send data out of an AWS environment, it will cost you money. If you, um, if you keep it inside a region, uh, it will cost less, and they change the prices every time. So think about IoT, for example. So a lot of companies are doing IoT, and they are collecting data, and they, they collecting it in an, inside an S3 uh, bucket. But they consume that data, with an application inside your own data center. So now what you do is you just demotion the virtual machine from your on-prem data center to your in-cloud data center, and you connect to the S3 bucket, and you have the data close by, something we call data gravity. One thing I really want to emphasize, it runs on bare metal. But I hear a lot of rumors that it's nested, it's EC2. Yes, we use EC2 framework. We use it in a different way that uh, Amazon is using it, or actually they designed a new way to use the EC2 environment actually for us. So like I said, they are having data centers around the world. So when I started to create this, this, this deck, I got this image from, uh, from Amazon. And uh, recently I got an email um, from Werner, almost the CTO said, dude, uh, you need to update your slides because uh, UK is already operational and uh, there's a lot of other new cool stuff coming along. So actually, I have trouble updating my presentation with the, uh, the speed they actually erect data. That's, uh, that's how fast Amazon is, uh, is working. The cool part is, Think about this from a global scale. Let's, let's say you obtain a business in Australia, right? How are you going to provide IT organizations? You want to manage it, so you are taking control of their IT organization. Are you going to look for a data center? Are you going to look for a uh, co-location? Uh, co are you looking for a partner? What you also can do is just log into the AWS, the VMware Cloud and AWS portal just select the data, uh, the, the size of your SDC, click on OK, and within moments you have a fully operational SDC environment running in Sydney. Just normal vSphere, just normal vSAN, just normal NSX. Ready for you to consume. Connect it with your vCenter server, 
and you can manage that entire environment with the current skill set that you already uh, have. Like I said, it's a service. And with the service, there are some rules. But one of the things is that we own the hardware. We control the hardware. We manage the hardware. That means that something, some uh, procedures cannot be executed by the customer anymore. For example, you do not have root access to those servers. You cannot install a VIP. There's some virtual network configuration that you're not allowed to do anymore. I'm writing a white paper on the restricted access model, which I'm going to release within the next couple of months that actually shows you what you can and what you cannot do, right? But the thing is, if something is wrong, you just call VMware, right? We take care of that. If something's wrong with the hardware, we, buy, uh, we call Amazon and they will fix it for us. We call you back, right? And for most of the, the stuff, we actually monitor it so before you actually know it's, it's, uh, uh, there's a problem, we already uh, spotted it or actually fixed it if possible. Right? Mm -hmm.